Hey everyone. So typically when discussing the claim that the Jewish people have to the land of Israel, there are usually three perspectives that are emphasized or that are presented. Number one is the historical perspective. Number two is the international law perspective. And number three is the survival perspective. I, I happen to agree with a number four perspective, the biblical and God perspective, but that's that's for a different day. Check out this particular video between Jordan Peterson and Bibi Netanyahu, where Bibi lays out the uh, at least parts of the historical argument for the land of Israel and for the Jewish uh, connection with the land of Israel. But I'd actually start with the original Moses. Uh, the Jewish people uh, have lived in the land of Israel, what is now the, the state of Israel, uh, have lived here and have been attached to this place for about 3,500 years. Three and a half millennia. Now, for the first two millennia, roughly, of that time, uh, we were living in what is described in a text commonly known as the Bible. So the Bible describes how the Jewish people lived on this land, were attached to this land, fought off conquerors, sometimes were conquered, but stayed on their land. And that uh, continued uh, for a very long time until roughly the sixth, seventh century, actually, uh, after the birth of Christ, okay? For, for roughly for 2,000 years. Uh, we were conquered by the Romans, we were conquered by the Byzantines, they did a lot of bad things to us, but they didn't really exile us, contrary to what people think, okay? The ones, uh, the, the, the loss of our land actually occurred when the Arab conquest took place in the seventh century. The Arabs burst out from Arabia and they did something that no other conqueror, not the Romans, not the Byzantines, not the Greeks before them, not Alexander the Great, nobody did before. They actually started taking over the land of the Jewish farmer. They brought in military colonies that took over the land. And gradually over the next two centuries, the Jews became a minority in our land. So it is under the Arab conquest that the Jews lost their homeland. The Arabs were the colonials. The Jews were the natives dispossessed. Well, that happens in history. The Jews were dispossessed. We were flung to the far corners of the earth, uh, suffered unimaginable suffering because we had no homeland, but we didn't disappear. And we never gave up the dream of coming back to our ancestral homeland. So generation after generation, the Jews could be in Warsaw, they could be in Yemen, they could be in, uh, they could be in China. And they said, next year in Jerusalem, we'll come back next year in Jerusalem. Well, that uh, was made possible because the Arabs who had conquered the land basically left it barren. They never made it their own. It was a barren land. It really had, practically it was an empty land. And in the 19th century, the idea of coming back next year in Jerusalem became a reality. By the way, in part because of Christian Zionist support for the idea of the great return. The Jews came back in the 19th century to the land of Israel. The result of this return was that we started building farms, factories, places of employment. <laughs> Arabs from nearby countries started emigrating and they now became, they call themselves Palestinians. They reconstructed history and said, we've been here for centuries. No, they haven't. They weren't there at all. And they didn't have a national consciousness. We came back, made it our land, and we said, okay, we now will live together. We decided to establish a state in 1948, that's 75 years ago. And we, we said, everybody can live here. The Arabs said, there can't be a Jewish state. You have no right to be here. It's our land. It's not your land. It's been our land for 3,500 years. If you took over your, uh, somebody's apartment, knocked them out, dispossessed them, and they never gave up the claim, and they said, it's our claim, and you left this barren dump, okay? And this, the, uh, the, the, uh, Families, the progeny of the people you, you kicked out, came back, rebuilt the house. You cannot come back and tell them, you don't belong here, we're gonna kick you out. Especially since you're latecomers who've come to live in, you know, in part of the house, which is what the so-called Palestinians are, okay? We say to them, you can live here, we can live here, but it's our land, it's our state. And the reason this conflict continues is because the Palestinians, who are, represent the, the, the colonial powers, the Arab conquest uh, of uh, the Middle East and beyond, they are saying, 
you have no right for a Jewish state. Well, we do. If any people has any right to a state, if any people never gave up their dreams of returning to their ancestral home, if any people rebuilt their home from nothing, from barren, wasted land, it's the Jewish people. To tell them, you who have suffered more than anyone else, you have never lost your dream of coming back and rebuilding your national life in your ancestral homeland, you have no right to be there. But the Arabs who are trying to destroy you, they have that right. That is a complete perversion of history and also a complete perversion of justice. The Jews belong to this land. This land belongs to the Jews. The Palestinians are free to live here next to us, among us, but they're not free to demand the dissolution of the Jewish state. That is not justice. That is injustice. That's the shortest lecture I can give you about Jewish history. So you there's a museum, uh, it's called the Museum of the Diaspora. It's near the Galilee in Israel. And there's a photograph over there of a family that's been consistently living there. I mean, family, the children, uh, they are the children of the children of the children. The family has been living in the land of Israel since the time of the first temple. So it, when, it, when we talk about from a historical perspective, the Jewish people are the indigenous people of the land of Israel, not the colonizers.